Take three. <clears throat> Explore. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Big Chief Burrito, here with another scene breakdown. And today we're going to talk about the difference between an homage and being derivative. An homage can usually be defined as, and I'm going to go to the Wikipedia page and make sure I got it right, a show or demonstration of respect or dedication to someone or something, sometimes by a simple declaration, but often by more oblique references, artistic or poetic. The term is often used in the arts for when one author or artist shows respect to another by illusion or imitation. The reason this is important is because, you know, filmmakers from Tarantino to Kubrick to Scorsese have been doing homages since they began. Obviously, these directors that became popular in the 70s, 80s and 90s were doing homages to films from the 40s, 50s, 60s. And sometimes they're so vague and so small that you can't notice them. In other cases, for example, in a film like Swingers, where there's an homage to Reservoir Dogs in the diner conversation and then walking out. It's blatant and it's meant as like a wink wink nod to the film because the filmmaker believes that you've seen the other film and therefore you're gonna get a kick out of it. Myself as a filmmaker, this came up for us when we made uh, my second feature film, Slapworthy. I created a scene where two characters were breaking up well, maybe breaking up, they were having a breakup conversation. And it reminded me a lot because it was taking place in a bedroom to the mall rat scene where Brody's breaking up with Shannon Doherty's character. Here's a slap worthy scene. And hey, here's the mall rat up. scene. Wake up. What time is it? Sweet fucking Christ. Christ, would you knock it off? Go back what? to bed. Come on, wake up. What time is it? 9.30. Man, go back to sleep. I thought you were gonna make us breakfast. Breakfast? Fuck breakfast. It's the first half and I'm up 6-1. We can get breakfast any time. But Tottenham? The Hotspurs? He beat the Reds once, maybe twice in a lifetime. Breakfast? Breakfast schmreakfast. Look at the score, for God's sake. I'm only in the middle of the second, and I'm winning 12 to 2. Breakfast come and go, Renee. Now Hartford, the whale, hey, they only beat Vancouver once, maybe twice in a lifetime. All right, so basically it's the first few lines of the scene. And, uh, you know, I thought that since the setting, bedroom, the situation, waking up in the morning, having this conversation, were similar enough when I began to think about the scene that I decided to create this little homage to it. It's more on the swingers reservoir side of the homage street, as opposed to the more vague sort of Easter eggs that you would call it that other filmmakers have made. And if you didn't know me or you didn't know my love of Kevin Smith's films, then you would think perhaps that, you know, I was being derivative or I was even stealing a scene from another movie and sort of passing it off as my own. This is something that happens a lot in young filmmakers first couple of films because they have limited resources and sometimes they're going to uh, shift to trying to do something that's familiar or a familiar theme in their life and the films that they really like. So is it okay to do an homage? Always. It's how you do it that you have to be careful with. You have to be confident that the rest of your film is different enough from the film that you're giving an homage to or the artist you're giving an homage to so that it stands on its own. So that when you look at the entirety of the film, it's bigger than that. If the main thing that people can remember about it is that, oh, it's that one movie where he ripped off Reservoir Dogs. That's not what you say about Swingers. Swingers is a much more robust um, you know, it's an iconic film for myself. That homage is something that I know about because I've seen both the films and that you might see as well, but you don't think that it takes over the project. My number one thing for filmmakers is to make the film that you want, whatever that means. You know, my goal is to get you to think about why you're making those decisions, why you're making those choices so that 
you don't sell yourself short so that your film stands out and so that you can make, you know, so that we can get more varied voices, point of views um, in the industry. Just because you have a shot of somebody getting off that couch and you see their feet walking past the screen, does that mean you're ripping off Tarantino? Does that mean that you have a foot fetish? What does that mean? That means you wanted a shot, you know, from the person getting up out of bed and walking towards the kitchen and you wanted to see uh, their feet. But, you know, be open and be honest with yourself why you're doing it. Are you doing it because it's easy and you want a copy that you're seeing? Think about the shot. Try to figure out a way that's original to you, that you want to see it. Visualize the movie as you're writing it. Visualize it as you're setting up your shots. A lot of this is going to come down to what's available to you. Write to what you have control over. The reason, um, you know, a lot of films are set in a home is because people have access to their own apartment, their own house, maybe their cousin's house. Maybe your aunt owns a grocery store that you can shoot at at night, or your cousin has a taco shop that you can shoot at after three in the morning. Shoot, create the content originally to what you have control over. If you have to gorilla some shots, go gorilla some shots. Just always be safe, number one. Um, and like I said, think about what you want to do. The way you choose to tell that story is up to you. Yes, everything's already been done, but you have to do it your way. And actually, you know, some things haven't been done. You know, the, the more people, the more point of views we have coming into the film industry, the more types of films are going to be made, things that hopefully we haven't even thought of yet that people are coming up with right now. So you can watch both scenes. Uh, I'll link them here below. And you can also watch the full feature length slap worthy on our YouTube channel or on 2 And it does feature a very diverse cast, uh, a Latina as our lead, um, a non-Spanish speaking Mexican as our male lead and uh, a variety of 2 a.m. beat players. <clears throat> so, uh, thanks for watching. That's been the scene study, and remember, make the film you want.